Now, in this context, uh, what would you like to talk about that counterbalance part? The counterbalance is not overt. The counterbalance is uh, a factor. In continuation, you mean? Yeah. It continues because India has now more reason to be uh, closer to the US because when China is actually threatening us and actually intruding into Indian territory and sitting there and uh, fortifying it, the entire uh, line of actual control on their side, India has reasons to worry about because India's uh, comprehensive national power is nowhere near China's. They are five times uh, stronger, bigger. They spend more money on defense. So we can't fight China. Therefore, we need strong partners. And the US, as the strongest power on earth now, is, is uh, the obvious partner. So uh, yes, uh, we value that relationship. And uh, America has also, uh, its uh, relationship yeah. with China has become more and more confrontational. Now, they talk about uh, uh, something happening in Taiwan and it will lead to a clash between the United States and China, a military clash coming up in the 21st century. So, things have gone beyond just uh, 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 presuming that something might happen. Much has happened already, which makes the China factor bring India and China together. The Quad, for instance, yes. is a new institution and India and the US are a part of it. There is no question, no matter what, how much we say, oh, the Quad is only for coordination, they talk about global issues. The fact is the Quad is a message to China that, hey, four important militarily strong countries yes. are there if you are up to any mischief. I, I wanted to uh, highlight yes. s the kind of heights that we have reached with the U.S. Certainly, yes. Particularly under Prime Minister Modi. Okay. Okay. Let me take you to our level of trade and economic cooperation. Okay. Yes. Let me give you a comparison. 2000 and, uh, uh, 2004, when I left Washington, our annual trade with the United States was around... 20 billion dollars, right? In 2004? Yes. 2014, when Modi took over as Prime Minister, it had reached uh, 100 billion dollars. The latest figures we have is of 2022, and it is close to 200 billion dollars. And, 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 and we are planning to, yes. planning to raise it to 500 billion dollars in the next few years. This is a colossal achievement. Yes. And unlike in the, in the case of China, where the burden the deficit is on us, we actually have a surplus with the United States, believe it or not. That's, that's so, so uh, uh, trade and commerce. Mill mill ties. This is becoming almost the showpiece of the relationship. That today the military partnership is the most visible one. Why? Because um, when India was under sanctions, as I mentioned, yes. even a paper clip would require inter-departmental consultations. Today, India is a major defense partner, so no, uh, no, no uh, reservations on the kind of technology that India wishes to get from the two industry. can share, yes. The two can share, and now Mr. Modi under the Atman Nirbhar program, is making sure that what we get is what we are able to co-produce and manufacture. This is a big leap. And mind you, the, uh, the military trade with the US alone was almost zero during 2004. But since then, it has gone up to about $30 billion. That's massive. Yes. And there is more in the pipeline. India and the U.S. conduct more military exercises jointly than with any other country in the world. So the military relationship is becoming more solid. And this, I think, is also due to China. Okay. okay. Now, uh, another important factor is the Indian diaspora. 
Okay. It was completely ignored in the first five decades. It was Bajpai who started saying, yes. well, they are also stakeholders. They are part of us. Now, what has happened to the diaspora is, since Mr. Bajpai started this, that has also acquired a life of its own. The diaspora has actually grown to four million people today. And Indians are going higher and higher in visibility in the United States. Uh, forget about Silicon Valley, which is yes, dominated yes, yes. by Indian CEOs. But look at the politics. Um, you have a person of Indian origin in Kamala Harris as vice president, the number two position in the United States. You have what is called a Samosa Caucus, yes. a group of uh, uh, congressmen of Indian origin who have formed a group. But that's not the important group for India. The important group for India is what the Americans call, Americans call a caucus. And in the US Congress, the second largest group, second only to the Black Caucus, is the India Caucus, which was started by my distinguished predecessor, uh, Mr. Siddharth Shankar Rai, when he was ambassador okay. there. My humble contribution in the three and a half years I was there was to create a caucus in the US Senate. The Senate has very few caucuses because the senators yes. are very uh, <coughs> proud people, yes, conscious, about conscious the of community. their individuality. Yes. But we worked hard and at the end of it, a day before I left Washington, we had a meeting in the US Congress. In the presence of some of the top congressmen and senators, we set up the Senate Friends of India. A day before I left, I handed over charge in Washington. That's something significant, quite that significant. significant. Yes. And I think our choice was also good. The Democratic co-chair yes. was no other than Hillary Clinton, who later on became yes. the Secretary of State. Contended, yes. Yes, and a contender for yes. the presidency. So, so. And apart from that, even in judiciary, there are a large number of... Judiciary, uh, they are making their presence felt. Yes. Indian names are coming up as important yes. judges yes. Uh, in, in the lower circuits. Yes. We still don't have anybody uh, in the... At the state court. level, yes. State, state level, state, yes. yes. The, 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 uh, but the high levels... Uh, we are, they are yet uh, to reach. But it will happen. Yes. I think it will inevitably happen. Yes. So I was trying to illustrate how we have reached new heights yes. during the last uh, you know, uh, few years of Mr. Modi's prime ministership. And this is more during Modi too. More during Modi too. Modi too. Because Mr. Modi has actually propelled yes. the, the diaspora into taking an even greater uh, uh, visibility. It's taken a momentum of its share. It's taken a Because the way he marshals yes. the NRI the, the, um, abroad and has these rallies which create such a stir. You know, imagine... Uh, Trump was taken ab aback when uh, that Howdy Modi uh, uh, meeting took place. Uh, he had never addressed a crowd like this in his life, okay? even though you're the president. So this is a showpiece now, okay. as almost as a part of the prime minister's official itinerary wherever he goes in the world, okay. whether it is to the United States or even, even to, to Japan to or uh, Japan or even the the islands in the South Pacific, yes. because Indians are everywhere. There are about thirty million of them, and uh, they are there in almost every country of the world. And even during Ukraine crisis and all, we have reached out and helped those Indians in distress there. That's also it happened started during Sushma Swaraj time. It, it was also uh, a revelation that we had 20,000 Indian students studying medicine in the Ukraine. Yes. No, it, it's, it tells you something. That. So we've done that. Yes. Uh, anything else that you would like to uh, sort of remark uh, in this uh, connection? Well, I wanted to add just one more. The people-to-people -people contact. Okay. No other country has this traffic that we have with the United States. A million people visiting the US from India every year, and almost the same number coming from the United States to India. And because of COVID, there was such a backlog 
that the Americans are working uh, overtime to create the backlog of the Indian visas. And this has been the subject of discussion at official meetings. Okay. How to make it so? Um, so people are voting with their feet. America is a country of choice. There are 200,000 uh, Indian students studying in American University. That's quite a number. Yes, quite a number. And soon that will become the largest group of foreign uh, students. Presently it's the second largest. The second largest. Yes. It's going to be the largest soon. And uh, at the government level, as I mentioned, there is an across the spectrum dialogue, not confined to MEA or Defense Ministry or, or Commerce and Industry. It is across the government. 60 dialogues at minister's level. 6 0. Yes. 6 0. Yeah. Now, the top one, of course, is the summit. Yes. And the summit has the president and the prime minister talking to each other. Then you have formatted meetings, like what the Americans call 2 plus 2. They are foreign minister and defense minister and the, their counterparts on our side. Yes. They meet. They meet often yes. to discuss important issues. The national security advisors do a lot of work behind the scenes. And uh, Mr. Doval had preceded uh, Prime Minister Modi's visit to the US and had done intense negotiations with his counterpart, Jake Sullivan. So these, uh, this networking is taking place. And so I think uh, this is something that is not temporary. This is something that is going to endure this relationship. That would be in of India, course, there yes. Are, there are problems. Uh, in mutual interest, about. yes. And wave, yes, yes. But at least we are able to discuss problems without, as they say, they're becoming a crisis. Right. Okay. So, we uh, stop here, yes. as far as this video is concerned. Yes. And uh, the next video, uh, we would have... Uh, India. Aha, you've yes. forgotten an important issue. Yes. Uh, Prime Minister Modi's visit to the US. Uh, yes, uh, we would uh, cover that in the next, next video. One. Okay. Next video, okay. yes. Okay. Thank you.